Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today I will show you a very interesting scenario that I just encountered while I've been trying to film something totally different. Now I don't want to spoil you so just stick with me. I am first going to show you the uncommented original sequence and then we will analyze it afterwards and go into the full detail about what happened, why it happened and what we can learn out of it. So let's go. Go around flaps. Engines are pulling down. Set tow guard. I was afraid. Gear up. And from here on we climbed into safety. But what exactly happened? Let's have another look at the key scene in question and have a close look at the auto throttle and the auto throttle's FMA on the upper left of the primary flight display. You will notice how a split second before I'm pressing the go around button the auto throttle changes from speed mode into retard mode and that causes the engines to spool down. But let's have a look. Go around flaps. I've outlined the indication in question for you in red over here. You can clearly see how the auto throttle is indicating retard mode rather than go around or thrust mode or something like that that you would normally expect on a go around. At this point, as you are not expecting anything the likes and as you are not really expecting to do a go around in first place, it might become overwhelming very, very quickly for the pilot. And therefore, important instrument scanning, understanding of what the airplane is doing and what the airplane is supposed to do is so important over here. When we are selecting a go around, we are basically expecting an aircraft to do two things. When the auto throttle is engaged, it needs to show us some kind of thrust mode. Now, depending on the aircraft that you're flying, that may, may be something like N1, GA, thrust, or anything the likes. But all aircraft are going to give you something into this direction. Now, the other thing, of course, is that you as the pilot flying are still responsible, the pilot monitoring as well, but of course, to verify that your engines are actually spooling up. And only because I did that and because I looked at the M FMA and it looked strange to me, I did notice that the engines have not been spooling up but spooling down instead. And therefore I've been able to disconnect the auto throttle and then go into the go around maneuver. But you can see in the original video how much speed I originally lost on this. Engines are spooling down. Set tow guard. At this moment we are in a really dire situation. You can see our airspeed has reduced to 110 knots, our radio altitude is 160 feet and within the last 7 seconds our engine have only spooled up to 80%. Now the engines are at least spooling up but then again at the same time the stall warning is setting on so that is making our way to the ground a lot more likely. Luckily at this very point we are finally starting to pick up some speed again and slowly starting to get out of the trouble. But if I had disconnected the auto throttle maybe just a second later, chances are the stall would have um, overcome us and we would have begun our way to back towards the tarmac or even worse into the water. Now you would surely say, so that must surely have been a bug in flight simulator, right? This could never happen in a real aircraft, don't you think so? Well, not quite. Let's have a look at the following. What we can see on screen is the remains of Emirates Flight 521, a Boeing 777-300 that flew from India to Dubai with 282 passengers and 18 crew. 
Here is the very short summary of what happened. If you are interested in the longer summary, then please do have a look into the article on the accident in the Aviation Herald, which I have linked in the video description below. The very short version is the aircraft has been on final approach with a slight tailwind and approximately 5 foot over the runway. The tailwind changed into a strong headwind, leading the aircraft to land very long or rather to float very long until eventually the RAS system announced long landing, long landing and the commander initiated a go around. At that point the uh, right main landing gear has um, actually touched the ground and the weight on wheel sensor triggered approximately 1100 meter past the runway threshold followed by the left main landing gear's weight on wheel sensor three seconds after the right main landing gear. The nose gear however remained airborne at all the time. In this particular configuration in the Boeing 777 the toga switches are inhibited for sending commands to the auto throttle. That led to the fact that the auto throttle was not advancing the thrust levers for the go around, therefore the engine stayed at idle thrust. However the aircraft had gained some excess speed due to the change in wind which led the pilots to commence the go around normally retract the flaps to 20 and when the aircraft initially became airborne again to retract the landing gear. However, the aircraft did not remain in the air very long. They lost the speed really quickly, which was noticed by the first officer who called out check speed. And at that point the thrust levers were moved from idle to full forward and the auto throttle system transitioned from idle to thrust mode. However, at that point it was too late and the aircraft impacted the ground again with the landing gear halfway retracted and you can see the outcome of this situation. These are the contributing factors that um, led to the accident as listed by the air crash investigators in their final report. Currently screenshotted from the Aviation Herald from the link that you can see below and in the video description. I have marked three points there that I want to put particular emphasis on. That is point F. The operator's operations manual part A policy required the use of the auto throttle for engine thrust management for all phases of flight. This policy did not consider pilot actions that would be necessary during a go around initiated while the auto throttle was armed and active and the toga switches were inhibited. Point G. The flight crew operations manual go around and missed approach procedure did not contain steps for verbal verification callouts of engine thrust state. And part H. The aircraft systems, as designed, did not alert the flight crew that the toga switches were inhibited at the time when the commander pushed the toga switches with the auto throttle armed and active. So these points here really point into a certain direction. That is, all contributing factors in this accident, or at least the, in my opinion, most important ones, were that pilots were not emphasized sufficiently that they actually have to check on the thrust in the go-around. We can see that one step further up as well in point echo where it says in point um, one according to the operator's procedure as per flight crew operations manual flight mode annunciators FMA changes are not required to be announced for landing when the aircraft is below 200 feet. So the pilots were really put into a situation there where they did not have to monitor the or rather where they were not emphasized to monitor the FMAs and where it was very easy for them to miss because they never handled the thrust levers manually as we can see in point F. They have always been using the auto throttle and all of a sudden they needed to increase engine thrust manually. So it is very easy to understand how this situation could evolve. Now ever since that accident happened pilot training has changed and actually in some of the recurrent simulator checks that are being conducted nowadays there is actually an emphasis put on thrust state in go-around procedures. So we have learned from this particular event and the incident that just happened to me even though it was just in Microsoft Flight Simulator and with an aircraft that I've not been familiar with the incident shows very well how that training really goes into effect nowadays and that enabled me to detect the situation early and do something about it while I still had the time. Now, let's have a look into 
how close that actually got in Microsoft Flight Simulator in my particular situation. Here is a re-recording that I have done where I just about took a second or two longer disconnecting the auto throttle and increasing that thrust manually. And you can see how that one turns out. Go around flaps. Two low flaps. Two low flaps. Two low flaps. Two low flaps. Auto throttle. Disengage. Full thrust. An impact like this would certainly have been not survivable. So what can we learn from this then? Well, the first and foremost important thing that I'm ever emphasizing on my channel is do closely monitor your automation and be 100% sure that either it is doing what you want it to do or you disconnect it and do it manually. This video is a very good example of that practical approach. So we start the go around. It takes about a second or two where I'm focused on rotating the airplane at 15 degrees pitch but then immediately I see my thrust is going back, that is not where I want it, disconnect the auto throttle, firewall the thrust levers, and get the airplane out of that situation. Had I taken just a second or two longer, as we can see in the recreation, in the case where it did not go so good, then things might have turned southbound very, very quickly. So especially in a situation where you are so close to the ground, be 100 and 101% sure that your autopilot is doing what you want it to do. Otherwise, do what you do as a pilot, take over and save your ass. So, that shall conclude the look at today's video. Because it's been such a nice go-around, I'm going to show you the entire original sequence once again, including the complete go-around. Note how we are first recovering the airplane from the stall, then we're going into the normal go around sequence once again clean the airplane up and finally retract the flaps and engage the um, flight directors again and start with the after takeoff checklist that shall be the end of today's video though i really hope that you have liked this one do let me know in the comments below what you think about it and then i am really looking forward to read those comments Thank you very much from my side. As always, like, comment and subscribe. And if you do want to support the channel, you can do so in the buy me a coffee link that you can find in the video description below or by becoming a Patreon. I have also included that link for you. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Now let's go and watch the entire original sequence once again. This will be me signing out. Thank you very much and enjoy. Go around flaps. And that's us pulling down. Set toe guard. Pause that afraid. Gear up. <laughs> so climb thrust, buck up. Flaps up. Level change, auto thrust, flaps up. Vertical speed, autopilot, after takeoff checklist.